All right, in this lesson, what we're going to do is take a look at BSP brushes. Now, we've already seen addition and subtraction brushes, and we're going to use them again, this time to facilitate some of the other things or other tools that are available for working with brushes, such as, in this lesson, we'll be looking at intersecting brushes, brush clipping, vertex editing, and we'll talk a little bit more about rebuilding geometry. So with that, Logan, let's go ahead and start out by building, let's say, two different rooms. One that's actually going to be part of the real map that we're creating for players to play, and the other room is going to serve more as a construction zone that we can use for building different prefab brushes. Okay. So first I'll come down and grab a cube primitive, right click to bring up its properties, and set its height to about 512, and its width and breadth to 1024. 1024, yeah, that's going to give us uh, plenty of room, excellent. Now this time, instead of going in there and actually subtracting it out, let's go ahead and assign a texture ahead of time. So we'll go ahead and bring up our texture browser, pick a texture, good. Now when we come in here and we actually do a subtraction, that texture will be assigned to all of our walls for us. Okay, now I could hit the subtract button or the shortcut, control S. Excellent, so if control S does a subtraction, I guess it might be good for us to go ahead and tell them that control A does an addition brush. Right. Okay, so let's go ahead now and build another room. This time, this other one we're going to build is going to be, let's just make it a lot taller. It's already plenty wide enough. It's maybe about twice as high, okay, also so 1024. Yeah, that's good. And again, this room will not be part of the actual map that a player would play. This is just a construction zone, and you're going to see what we're talking about in just a second when we start doing intersecting brushes. Okay, good. So now that we've got our construction zone in place, let's go ahead and talk about, let's say, intersecting brushes. Okay. Well, first, let's start building some geometry. How about we build a support pillar for our first room? Okay, that sounds good. So I'll start out with a cylinder. I'll bring up its properties, and we'll set its height to 512, like the, the room we had before, and set its outer radius down to about 128, and say build. Also, we want to go ahead and change the texture first before we go and add this in. Yeah, we want to have something that's kind of contrasty against this back wall. So I'll grab a metal texture. Now, the uh, I'll use the shortcut control A, add that in. And now I've got the start of a pillar in the middle of this construction box. So now what you're going to do is go in there and use another cylinder construction brush, but this time we're going to set some special properties on it so that it's hollowed out, more like a tube, so that we can create a dumbbell-looking shape. Right. So I'll bring the cylinder's properties back up. I'll set its height down to 256. And this time I'll set its inner radius to 64. And for inner radius to be relevant, I need to set hollow to true. And I'll go ahead and hit build. And there we have more of a kind of ring shape that we can cut out from this first cylinder. Absolutely. By subtracting it. Oh, very nice. Now, what we're looking at right here is actually two different brushes. We've got the addition brush and then the subtraction brush. And Logan, go ahead and show them by switching over to a wireframe view inside your perspective. There you go. You can actually see the bright blue being the addition brush, and the yellow selected brush is your subtraction brush. Now, of course, if we want to use this shape all over our level, we would not want to have multiple addition and subtraction brushes together. What we can do is we can go in there and intersect these brushes and create one builder brush from it. Right. So I'll come back over and do a textured view. Let me grab a, uh, a cube to surround this first. Because what intersecting is going to do is basically have the builder brush completely surround whatever brush is inside of it and uh, conform to it. Let me go ahead and bring in, uh, another cube up. Let me change some of its parameters. Let's set its height to about 768 and its width and breadth to about 512. Just to give, to easily see that it will completely surround that column. So if I take a look in the front view just to verify, then we can see that the column that we've created exists inside this uh, builder brush. And now everybody should be able to see the relevance of having this construction zone because if we would have done that over there inside the actual room that we're creating for the map itself, we would have had a bit of a problem with the actual brush that we're going to use to intersect these two other brushes as it's a little bit too large. It's going to be overlapping that other room. Right. So now with this set up, I can go ahead and do the intersect by clicking intersect. intersect. And the hotkey for that would be? Control N. Control N. Okay, so now take, take a look, man. We've got a, uh, a builder brush in here that's actually the shape of that, those two pieces of geometry that we've created. 
All right. So now I can go ahead and drag that back to our first room and then kind of line it up to the edge there. Let me go look over. And now you can see that we have that as one single brush. It's no longer two separate brushes. So now we can do just a simple addition? Right. So I can Control add that a. add that in. And then if I drag the builder brush away, you see that it's just one single addition brush. Very nice. So now let's go ahead and let's put that on the other three corners of the room. Let's go ahead and show them how we can duplicate that addition brush there. Okay. Well, first you could simply right-click on it and say duplicate. And let me grab that duplicate and put it over in the corner, line it up. Now, if I wanted to grab both of these and duplicate them at the same time and move them to the other side of the room, I could hold Control so I have both of them selected. Then I could use Control w I could also right-click and say Duplicate or use the shortcut. So I'll hit Control w That will duplicate them, and then I'll simply Control-drag them to the other side of the room. Okay, something very important to point out. You'll notice down the perspective view that we're not actually seeing this geometry down there. And again, that's because we simply need to come in and rebuild geometry. Oh, wow, and there it is. All right, excellent. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at brush clipping. First of all, what is brush clipping, Logan? Brush clipping is where you can set up um, a sort of, or well, you can define a plane and then use that plane to cut up a selected brush or brushes. Okay, very nice. Let's go ahead and go back over into our construction zone area and create, I don't know, let's go ahead and create another cylinder. Okay. So let me grab, let's see what was in the cylinder last. Let me just turn hollow back off and build that. Okay. So go ahead and drag it over there into the construction zone area. Just drag that over. Now we've got hollow right now that I'm looking at. There we go. That's what so I want to see. build it back. So there, in this corner we can go and... And you know what, just to kind of simplify things, go ahead and grab the other two brushes, the addition and subtraction used to make that original shape, and delete those out and rebuild geometry real quick. Okay. I'm going to delete those out. And there, now I have more room to work with. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's much better. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and add this in, just a simple cylinder, and let me drag the construction brush out of the way. Okay. Now, if we wanted to set this up so we could start placing these clip markers to define where we're going to do the clip, we need to first enter br the brush clipping mode. With that mode active, we can then control and right click to place clipping markers. I control it, right click once there and once at the bottom. And there I have a clipping marker. You also got here. this, yeah, you got this red line that connects the two, showing you where the slice, if you want to look at it that way, is going to be made. And you also have a little red line that's perpendicular to it in the center, and that's showing you the surface normal. That's basically pointing to the direction that's going to get deleted. Right. So now, if you wanted to come in here and actually clip this real quick, uh, if you're using two clip markers, make note that you do need to have whatever viewport that you added the clip markers to selected when you try to actually go and clip. So with the top view selected, if I was to go and... And we probably want to select the geometry, too. Right. 